Hey, what's up guys? As uh, you can tell by the title, we finally got in some awesome stuff like this guy. And he also come with the magazine. So we're gonna switch up the uh, camera positioning here. Get this plastic off both and uh, dive into this unboxing. I'm pretty excited about this, been waiting. And if you've watched the previous videos on some diorama stuff, you can probably figure out what it was for now. And uh, let's just jump right into it. So with both of them out of their packaging here, so as you can see, we get this um, comic book, basically. We have this yellow bar here with the Tales from the Gangrene Estates, this creepy, almost Scooby-Doo-like writing. We get the Rumble Society logo right here. If you look at the cover, we get some pretty cool artwork and details. You can see some buildings in the back. We have some brickwork here. Um, looks like the windows are boarded up and they're kind of in this alleyway setup. You see the papers flying. There's some little eyes peeking through the hole here. Some old cans and trash. If you look very closely here, kind of out of the light, but it almost looks like there is a little skull on top of that can. The coloring of it and then the whiskers, it almost looks like maybe the skull of Gomez. And then um, looks like we get some other little creepy one up here at the top again. The severed head with the blood. We have Theodore Sod Cutter here in the back. And then like a newspaper piece right here with another picture of Theodore Sod Cutter. The barrels. It's pretty cool artwork here. If we flip it over to the back. There's some really cool stuff. Atticus Doom, another figure. Slugfest. Um, the Death Brokers, we have Doc Nocturnal, we have the Stands, there's a free Golden Grub Mezzets with every purchase, Mail 2 Mezco Toys, now I'm assuming, I don't know if this stuff is real, like if you can actually cut this out and send it in, um, personally I don't want to, I, don't, I would hate to ruin this magazine, or comic book, whatever you want to call it, and if we um, turn to the page here, we have Gomez, lots of cool little artwork, all in black and white. A really cool picture of Theodore Sodcutter here at the back. And then just some stories from the comics. I'll definitely be looking at these a little more later. But really cool piece that we get with this. Now, going to the box. So it's pretty cool here. So this is the back of the box. We have this um, kind of the building window cut, much like my diorama that I made. We have Theodore Sod Cutter, and this is the Ghostly Go Edition, so he is blue. It's the trench coat, and we see him with the dagger here. This old creepy house with the lights on in the background. If we flip it over here to the side, we have this gangrene estates, but in blue. The front, we have the um gate here and then probably that same old house in the background theodore sod cutter just kind of sitting over it he's got his um the smaller little like bowler hat on and you can probably hear my nails or my dog's nails clacking in the background and uh so this is the px previews exclusive limited edition the top we have the same logo on the side, we have a different artwork, which is really cool, mostly black, and then there's just a little cutout. I'm standing kind of looking to like light up eyes. Yeah, really cool. So, like maybe we open this one here from the sides. Like shoebox style. Which is really cool. So, yep, we have more artwork here like the creepy face, the hands, the dagger, and the brickwork. That's, that'd be a cool scene to make. And if you open on top, we get the uh, coffin there. That is sick. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and set them up here. So right out of the packaging. Um, this little rope has fallen out. So it looks like we get um, the scarf and then a rope for whatever posing option you really want to do there in this first little bag we reach up into the corner here we can pull out the figure itself 
And they usually package this stuff to where it's pretty protected. So you always have the main clear cover and then these little covers. And then it looks like I have to figure most of his hands and accessories that we just dumped onto the ground. That I'm now struggling to get back in there. Yeah, this works easier to show you guys for sure. So, taking a look at the figure. Oh, cool. Okay, so I didn't realize <laughs> from the pictures, he's definitely got his own body. Um, he's very, like, hunchback there. You know, he's not on a Gomez body or anything. Mine, personally, has some little white splatters. The jeans are almost like a skinny jean look. Now, I kind of want to get another set of these pants if I can find this separate for another figure. And, yeah, definitely some weathering on him. He's got his vest, which does look to be Velcro here. If you open it up, he's just got a black dress shirt on. The coat is a really cool um, kind of a suede felt material. It's got these split in the back there. Um... The sides are wired. There's no wire in the tails itself. The split there, the back's wired. So we can do some really cool poses like that. Try to get better angles for you guys. Um, you can tell his arms are extremely long. Oh, they feel... The joints there, I would be careful with. They feel a little fragile. Look how long just this section of his arm is. It's like, okay, there we go. They come turned in the box. Shoulder articulation. Uh, I would definitely be careful with moving his arms. Like, he doesn't really have much up here. Definitely mainly the elbows is where you're going to get all your movement and posing with this guy. Take a look at the face. Get in the light here. Yeah, super awesome face. We have the gray hair. The teeth going here. This black wash. Great detail on the hands. Until the um, detail continues, so his arms are the same all the way up. Yeah, really impressed with the outfit. His head can look down really far, can look up a decent bit, sideways quite a bit. far as the shoes, the shoes have the, um, the boots, uh, no, they're shoes, they're, they're like dress shoes, they have the upswept toes, the toes are not hinged, how does he stand? Yeah, so, okay, so that's what I thought as soon as I noticed the toes is you're going to have to mess with them a good bit to get them to stand up. So I'm just going to go place them back here for now. And let's take a look at some of the alternate heads. We have this almost smirking one here. This almost reminded me of the Grinch. The gray hair kind of splits in the back. I mean, very bald. Um, it does have some more of that shadowing over the wrinkles. Pretty cool head. I'm not going to worry about putting those back in the packaging. Um, 
this figure is just not going to get thrown around or anything. And this one is definitely the more scary, creepy one. Those teeth are out so far. Really sharp, too. I think the eyes are popping out. He's looking different directions. Super crazy looking. We've got some detail in the mouth. And the tongue's got some paint application going on there. Really cool looking. So we're next, I can already tell through the clear wrapper here that um, this one's definitely another crazy looking head. I like this one. This one reminds me of the cover of Undead Nightmare almost. It's got the eye popping out. Um, the skull is actually showing. Skin's like peeling off here. Which I guess that blue stuff is his skin. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. It's a little weird, but... Pretty cool, nonetheless. All right, let's see what we got here. This one is definitely our more natural, neutral posed head. The black around the eyes, the teeth are closed. The gray hair, no skin peeling. Um, maybe a slightly lifted eyebrow, but not really. Now, what is different about, yes, this is more of a happy, grinning face. I'd still say it's kind of a neutral face, but this one's definitely the more plain, basic expression. You just look through the package. You can already tell that this one is um, very crazy and dramatic. Let's just start with the back. The hair is the same. The chin is very long. And if we are to come around to the side, see a really cool detail on the side. This one has like some bloodshot on the eyes. Again, the eyes are popping out. And we have the sharp teeth again. I mean, he is just jaw dropped like right now. He is screaming at the top of his lungs. Cool detail on the tongue. This head's pretty cool. Or his hands, I'm just going to show one of each side. Um, I don't, it's like almost like a piano playing hand, or just meant to be a creepy hand. Um, great detail in all of them. But so this one's got a lot of black on the fingertips. The next one down from that is going to be a hand to hold um, probably the dagger, maybe even the shovel. Pretty standard holding hand. And we have these longer hands. These are going to make his arms, he, like his, these probably will end up being like almost to his feet. This is long arms with these long hands. We're going to bring out his creepiness in those. But oddly, we have two sets of hands. If we go over here to the box, they're not two sets of hands, like two different um, plastic things that include hands. Just go ahead and show it. The back layer, good thing. Wow. The little mezzotip, this artwork that they chose for the display stand on this ghostly gullage, that's awesome. I like that a lot. We have batteries for the light up head. We have his tomb here. Theodore Sod Cutter rest in this spot, dug his last grave, and lay down to rot. And then on the back, Miss Sod Cutter is as well in the ground except for her head, which Theodore carries around. So we have these extra creepy hands here. I'm like grabbing like a girl in hands. This is the weird one that, like, when the monster comes toward you and he, like, you know, reaches out for you with that one finger and everyone's all scared. Yeah, that, that definitely that hand. And then, um, he's got slightly... He's got... Gotcha. And the lantern, this lantern's got some weight to it. It's got that, like, plastic 
metal no it's actual metal hook at the top the glass on it looks broken and this does take battery so this will light up cool little detail around the bottom some broken glass here but not the same piece they didn't just reuse it really cool looking lantern really like that and then um let's see we got a pickaxe it's cool like homemade wooden handle lots of detail it's the little brush holes and some cuts it's more on this side the wood shows through a little bit of a gold at the end here yeah pretty cool piece there there's other big weapons that are similar we have the shovel the same style handle it's got some wrap around it it's got some wood um the handle some detail it's got like a little screw holding the handle on um some wrap around the top there where you grab it some little cracks and details to make it look more like metal again with the screw hoe the shovel is you know beat up and worn and all scratched up and looks really good Now on to some smaller accessories. These may be a little hard to get out. We have this style. There's probably actual names for these types. I don't know. We have this style knife. It's black. It's screws. It's gold. Some silver. Blood on both sides. More on one side than the other. Sorry for the shakiness. I was trying to tap my um, screen to focus in. But we have this little axe here. The first knife I showed you, this one that was kind of hard to get out, which is a gold blade, the gold screws. And a little smaller one here in all in gold, the big, almost like Chucky or Halloween butcher style knife. The little tomahawk here, the hooks, not, um, shears it looks like. And that kind of looks like an old school, um, like, hole saw. Looks like the bit you would put in a drill and drill a hole, but you know, it's old, so it would be one you would have to manually turn to put some holes and stuff. And then we have these hats. This one's probably going to be my favorite. It's not super deep, so it actually just made to fit his head. Bowler's hat and like the wrinkles. It almost looks like it has eyes and stuff right here. It almost looks like a, um, oh, what is it called? The hat from Harry Potter. The, wow, what is it called? Why can I not think of it? The one that tells you which freaking house you're going to. Fits them really good. Focus in on them real quick. Yeah. So that hat looks pretty sick on them. Next over, we have a more medium sized hat. The same details shiny black buckle, a lot of wash, nice dark blues. Looks pretty cool in them. I like that one a lot too. And then we have this little um, shorter bowler hat and the back of it is a bit more weathered. This one's a lot more dirty. A little bit of blues and some of that same speckle that's on the outfit from the back. Um, it's weird that they did it on that hat. I kind of wish they would have added that speckle onto some of the other hats. And sitting here re-looking at them, they didn't. That's probably my least favorite hat. I just don't think it has as much character as the tall and the medium. But it has that dirty wash that matches the rest of that. So that's kind of a downfall. We have the bag here that you can carry around. Lots of little details in this, really cool. From the straps, the little um, rivets that hold it on. It's indented here on the side to get, make it look more like a you know, soft bag. We have the gold or brass, whatever you want to call that. A lot of that detail carries on to this side. The strap has the skull at the end. That's really cool that they did that. And if we lift up the skull carefully, 
The bag will then open. It's brown on the inside. Um, it is painted, I believe. I don't think it's casted. It does have a little bit of shadowing, but not like any crazy amounts of detail in there. Um, supposedly, this will fit into that bag. And here we are with the wife of Theodore Sodcutter, apparently. Um, so she's not blue. She got the open mouth. She was definitely screaming when um, she was beheaded. And apparently he was, um, yeah, so the head, hair's like up so he can like carry it by it. So he's like holding her by the hair. We have a little bit of the bone there and some meat. Pretty cool. And let's see. does fit in the bag. You have to angle it up a little bit because of the hair. And then you want to make sure the strap's out of the way so we're not closing that into it. And voila, it does close. So I think that's pretty much gonna wrap it up, guys. I'm gonna have to shorten this video a lot after looking at the time. I'm like, man, this is a long video, but this guy had a lot of accessories. He's super cool. Definitely gonna um, do some more with this guy. So be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. You'll see him in some stop motion stuff, some um, photography. I'll upload some pictures and stuff for sure. I'm definitely gonna take some right after this with my Dio set just to um, use as the thumbnail. But uh, before we leave, we're just going to go ahead and drop in my only other Mezco 112 so far. Holiday Gomez. You have nice and happy and creepy. These two do not go together whatsoever. But just for like size and arm comparisons and stuff. Theodore is a little taller. A little bit um, bigger. Pretty cool figure. Pretty cool. So the only really complaints is the arms do feel kind of fragile. He don't stand the greatest. Um, that one short hat has more dirt on it than the rest of them. It's not like a big overkill, but it'd be cool if the rest of them were dirty to match his outfit more. With that same like lighter brown dirt. And um, outside of that, I mean, everything else looks pretty cool. So thanks for watching guys and I'm out.